I'm a ventriloquist. No. Yeah. <laughs> You're a ventriloquist, huh? <laughs> no, the word is ventriloquist. That's what I said. No, you did. Sound it out like this. Then. What? Repeat after me. Then. Then. Good. Trill. Trill. O. O. Quist. Quist. Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. <laughs> Very young, I was fascinated by puppets of all kinds. And I think a lot of kids just are fascinated by puppets. So that year, for my birthday, I asked for a ventriloquist puppet. And my grandmother actually found this Charlie McCarthy puppet, and then she also found a record made by Jimmy Nelson called Instant Ventriloquism. And it was very basic lessons in ventriloquism. It was how to make substitute sounds to imitate those sounds that you normally form with your lips. That's basically ventriloquism. I remember sitting in front of a mirror and practicing and he gave us a phrase, the boy bought a basketball. And of course, when you first start that, it's the boy dot a basket doll. So then you basically kind of train yourself to make that D sound like a B so that it's, it's more like this. The boy bought a basketball. The boy bought a basketball. And so over time, I started to develop some skills. And I began to get real serious about writing material and putting together a show that would be entertaining. I put this guy on my knee and I just started to play with him and, and perform with him. You know, It was just magical for me to begin the process. That just kind of happens as a ventriloquist, as you're working with a puppet, where the personality starts to come out as you're playing with it. Well. How you doing? What's going on, man? Yes. So now fast forward to college. People were starting to take note of this unique thing that I did and in inviting me to do shows here and there. So I was asked by this Christian ministry crew uh, to work with us and come up with a little routine with your ventriloquist act that would be fun and creative and would capture people's attention and we go around to some of these parties and share our faith. And so then I would reach into my case and I would pull out Otis and I would launch into a little routine and everybody would kind of gather around and watch the show. And then at the end of this routine, I would say, well, you know, ventriloquism is not the most important part of my life, but actually the most important part of our lives is that we have a relationship with God through Jesus. And so that became the transition to be able to talk to people about Christ. So I began to get a vision for how the Lord actually might use this. It was shortly after that that I learned about Andre Cole. And I learned that he was on staff with Campus Crusade as an entertainer, and that he was a magician. And he used his act first to entertain people and to demonstrate his skills as an illusionist. But then he built a bridge with this very creative illusion involving a light bulb where he told the story of Christ and how he is the light of the world. And I was totally captivated by this idea that many of them will not go hear the Bible teacher that's speaking at the conference, but they will go to the entertainment. And so here's a way that I could actually potentially build a bridge to the gospel on stage. And so I started to think about how I might do that. And it was pretty rough initially. I remember the first time I did it, I was scared to death. <laughs> I was trembling and I just thought, how is this gonna be taken? I was very uncomfortable, but um, you know, the Lord used that. And, you know, you have to start somewhere. <laughs> so what I now do in my show that has been developed over time is I take Aunt Tilly, she's an old lady character, and actually I'll just bring her up. Oh my. How are you doing, Tilly? I'm all right. I can sit up and take nourishment. Well, that's good. Yeah. So now, Tilly, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. What's it? I'm just gonna put you down. What? Honey, I'll die. <laughs> You'll be all right. David. What's wrong? I'm hanging. Oh, all right, well, sorry. 
Actually, I'll just put you right here. Oh, be careful, honey. Doing all right? You're all right. So I take my hand outside. I take my hand out of Aunt Tilly. And of course, you know, what happens? You know, here's this character that was alive and talking. And now all of a sudden, you know, she doesn't say anything. Looks kind of sad. But uh, here's what I want us to think about. Aunt Tilly here has a little problem. She has no life. Well, apart from me. You and I have a similar problem. We have no spiritual life apart from a relationship with him. There is something that's missing in our lives. There's an emptiness that exists that nothing can fill. We chase after things that we think are gonna bring us satisfaction in life. That always escapes us. And it's left us hopeless. But fortunately, God does not leave us in this condition. But he's in fact given us the way to have a relationship with him, and that he has done in the gift of his son, Jesus. Apart from me, says Jesus, you can do nothing. But when we place our faith and our trust in him, he comes into our lives, fills our lives, and makes us the people that he's created us to be. He literally lives in us and through us. And, but most importantly, that restores to us the relationship that we were intended to have in the first place, the relationship with God. You ready? Not really. <laughs> Go ahead. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. So, for me, this has become uh, a way to use something that God has prepared me for my whole life. Uh, I didn't know when I was learning to become a ventriloquist at six years old that this was what all this was leading up to. It was just something that was fun to do. But I think that God prepares us and he gives us gifts along the way. And there comes a point in your life when you realize that God has given me this gift and there is a way that I can use this for his purposes and to build his kingdom. And so that added a whole new dimension to what I do as a ventriloquist. Now it's not just something that I do on stage to make people laugh and to entertain them, but it's a way to actually build a bridge to give people hope and to give them the greatest message in the world, and that is that God loves you. So I would encourage you or anybody, whatever your talent might be, and it could be anything, it could be any skill, any ability, but to use that to find a way to build a bridge to God's message to the world for others. And think of, ask him to show you, to reveal to you, what would that be? Um, that's what God did for me. He just started to reveal to me, this is how I want you to use the talent that I've given you. This is what I've prepared for you to do. And I think that he wants everybody to know that. And whatever that might be, whatever your talent, whatever your skill, whatever your ability, know that God has given that to you. And there's an opportunity for you to use that for his purposes and to build his kingdom. Well, let me, let me, I'm gonna go ahead and put her back. Oh, be careful, honey. Sorry, you'll be all right. Oh, I hate this. I know. Well. You all right? Not really.